we're going to make a sketchbook on this paper that I got from the craft paper that I got a roll of to send packages out from the post office. Um, pretty sure you can order it for delivery or pick it up if you're out at the post office or sometimes the dollar store has it. And I have India ink here. So I'm going to just make a bunch of big marks like I've been talking about doing. Because the India ink is so beautiful. And then you can do this. You don't have to do this on this paper. You can do it on any kind of paper. Oh, I like those, so I'll just leave those. You can do it on any size of paper. And then once I let it dry, I'm gonna show you how to fold it up and we'll make it into a sketchbook that you can make marks on top of afterwards and use as a sketchbook. In fact, so we're learning two things, which is how to make a little paper book, paper sketchbook, notebook, you can write on top of it. If you write on top of it with a white pen, that would be really cool. Um, so we're just gonna make some big sweepy marks. And then I'm gonna stop the video and then we'll shift it up and let it dry. Little more splashes. And you guys, if you want some India ink, I can give you some little bottles to pick up. So we'll stop there and let it dry. Ooh, nice. And then we'll, I'll show you the next step after it's dried. We'll fold it up, rip it up, and then we'll sew it together to make a sketchbook. So when I, my India ink is dry enough, I waited long enough, now that I'm gonna fold the, my big piece of paper. You can do this with a similar size of paper too. And I'm gonna take the straight edge. Bookbinders never like to use scissors. I'm gonna take the straight edge and make sure that it, what I'm trying to get is a big square. I'm gonna make sure that it's lined up well at the corner and I'm going to fold it back towards me. So that I know that I'm working with a square and not a rectangle. Stop. So I fold it over the flap. It's not exactly straight, but we'll see what happens. We can fix that in a minute. Um, I folded over the extra flap from my rectangle and I'm folding it and I don't have what's called a bone folder on hand um, that's used for ripping paper, like kind of like a letter opener, but I'm making a crease in the paper and then I'm cutting it by going outwards in this direction. So. When you're doing this with paper, it usually provides a deckled edge, deckled edge, which is quite nice looking. So then, I'm gonna pretend I have a helper monkey who's taking my scraps. And then I have a great big piece of paper that I'm gonna start folding up. It's a square now, hopefully, or roughly a square. And I'm going to start folding it up, matching up the corners, and then I fold by I'm folding it by pressing it outwards. So we're getting an evenly lined up fold. I'm going to crease it again. This works actually fine. It's a cheesement. and going out. Probably a plastic knife. Bone folders are usually actually made of bone. But probably a plastic knife could work for doing this too. 
So I'm just going to continue doing that and then the paper will get smaller and I'll show you how it progresses as the paper gets smaller and smaller. <clears throat> so I'm continuing to fold my paper and and make it a suitable size to handle as a sketchbook or a, I don't know, you can, a collage book, whatever you want to use it for, a notebook. So that's another size and then I'm going to always match up the corners. Fold it again. And you may have trouble ripping out, ripping the paper at the beginning. You'll get the hang of it though. And it's not a precious thing. I'm just gonna do it one more time. Match the corners up. Crease it really well. And now you can see that we're starting to get interesting pages that I think you can test the size you want to stop at. Maybe this is the size of the little book. Maybe I'll make it even smaller. I might just leave it there just for now. So you can see the gist of what I'm doing. As long as you're going an in an outwards direction, you should be okay to rip up your paper. And as long as your paper doesn't have too much weight to it. There. I'll do a few more and then I'll show you how to fold and sew it up. Okay, so I've folded my paper down to a size that I think is okay uh, to make a book. You can flip the pages out so that as you're going through the book, there's a pattern on each of them or not a blank a blank page or a pattern page and so now I'm going to show you how to put this all together once they're folded and then we're gonna once they're folded neatly we're gonna take you can do this precisely I usually just eyeball it um, about a quarter of an inch in, we're going to measure these marks that are at the middle. These are for our sewing pattern. We're basically gonna do a blanket stitch on this. Uh, one right in the middle, one just about a three quarters of an inch up from the bottom then equal distance in between them again up here so that we can do a blanket stitch with a fairly large sized eye on it with embroidery floss you can use wool you can use embroidery floss anything that's got um, not too much uh, not too thick but strong enough to keep the book together but not tear the paper. So I'm going to go in the middle, the center of my book, and go up through the middle and out the other side. And I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail here. Oh, I have a knot in it. I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail and then I'm going to wrap it around and go through the whole thing where I made my mark. 
to keep the book together. Then I'm going wherever the thread comes out, I'm going back on the other side up the next hole. You're always going to the closest hole to the last one you just finished. Poking through, basically just doing a blanket stitch, which is how we bind fabric and blankets. And then back in through that hole, that same hole, out the other side. <clears throat> up to the next hole on the same side, basically following where the thread leads you, where the last place that the thread came out, around again, and back through the other side. down to the edge of the book, around the bottom, up again, and through. Then you'll see you have a blank spot right here. So we're coming back through this way. Just follow the thread where you last left the thread off. continue up. And back in again from where the thread is on the same side as the thread is coming out. around continue on down to the bottom of the book around the bottom, back in this way, where it looks like it needs to be filled in, flip over, looks like it needs to be filled in, through, and now the final stitch is back through the middle to join up with the tail that you've left in the middle of the book. So let's find that. Oops, there we go. Hopefully I haven't ripped it to shreds. And we're gonna snip meeting in the center of the book and now I'm just going to tie them off so that we hide that tail that we made it with that we bound the book with and snip off the ends so that they're basically hiding in there and then Oh, this is not super neat and tidy, but we have a, a binding along the book. And then, like I said, you can use any kind of paper. And this I thought would be nice with a white pen, white paint, paint on top of it.
so on, and so on, and so on. Use colors, use, use whatever. Just This is just a basic to get you started. You can do more complicated bindings. Any kind of paper, black and white, craft paper, butcher paper, printer paper, whatever you need. I might keep working on that one. And I'll show you the finished product in a later video. If you get some of yours done, perhaps you can show me what you made. That would be great.